Today, we do one round to see how well World War II bombers can do while limited to a thousand meters against coastal warships. What would it look like? Let's find out. ran into a lot of complications doing this. We did a few rounds and War Thunder system would not allow all players in. Typically you can fit 64, but War Thunder was only allowing 30 in and to try to get the balancing right was very difficult. But I feel like this round was the best representation that we could get to demonstrate what the chaos would look like between World War II bombers and coastal fleet warships. Let's see who will win when there's 18 versus 14. Given the bombers have to stay under a thousand meters, they're gonna be within range of all the weaponry of the coastal fleet ships. And there are a lot of very interesting strategies our bomber participants had tried out that you'll see through the video. While they were limited in their altitude, some did fly very low to move around all the islands, which I thought was very smart, but there were some that were low and two out in the open. Even when the bombs were dropped and had exploded under the water, they were still seen damaging the planes. In a normal battle, the deadliest of the ships against the World War II bombers would have to be ships like the USS Douglas, with their guided missiles being able to blow these bombers out of the sky well beyond them being a thousand meters above. this to work and have as many participants that we had in this room we had to have ships and bombers be on the same team so it was a little disadvantage in the fact that the bombers that were on the same team as some of the ships knew exactly where they were but the coastal fleet ships that were on the same team as the bombers also knew where they were so it was kind of a trade-off when trying to segment bombers and ships on different teams War Thunder system would even let fewer players in the match but this way allowed us to have the maximum amount that we could fit in a room to do this event. There were a couple dive bombers that squeezed their way in, but I thought it kind of fit within the category anyway. I'm not sure what this guy's strategy was, but going down on the same level of the ship and trying to fight it in the water probably wasn't the best idea. But I'll have to admit, it was hilarious to watch. Halfway through with eight bombers left and five coastal ships. Coastal ships had the ability to allow the computer to do the aiming for them or they could manually aim themselves. In this instance, I believe the computer is doing the aiming, which it's always impressed me how accurate anti-air is in naval. Coming down to our last six bombers and four coastal ships left with four minutes in, what will the final outcome be?
last few bombers flying a bit too low and not taking that advantage of flying that thousand meter limit, which could help their survivability a little more. And unfortunately, one gets taken out from the airfield anti-air. down to the last bomber, with these Jet 1s being the hardest for the Coastal Fleet to take down, especially since there are no more missile Coastal Fleet ships left. Will he be able to take out the last two ships before the game ends, or the Coastal Fleet ships get him? round with only one ship left and one bomber. He made so many attempts going back around and around just trying to hit that last ship. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you to all those that helped and you all stay cool and keep flying or sailing.